Okay, so question 11 hasn't actually come up for my students yet, but this is worth us having here so you can look at it another time. For 11a, it says use the binomial expansion to show that the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x is approximately equal to 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared. Okay, let's deal with this that we've got on this side then. This is a combination of 1 plus 4x to the half divided by 1 minus x to the half. If I was going to write this as a single term, that would be 1 plus 4x to the half multiplied by 1 minus x to the minus a half. So I'm going to deal with both of these things that I've got here. And I'm just going to do a short expansion of them. And I'm going to do the expansion of them up to their x squared coefficient. So let's have a deal with 1 plus 4x to the power of a half to begin with. So it's got the 1 in this beginning place, which is fine. So I can now go straight in with using the formula. So we're going to have 1 plus n x plus n n minus 1 over 2 factorial multiplied by x squared. OK, this is just coming from the formula that you have in the formula book. If I simplify this, I've got 1 plus 2x. Let's just grab my calculator to save my brain a bit of time here. It's definitely going to be a minus because of these bits that I've got here. So that's a half times a half divided by 2 times 4 squared. And that becomes minus 2x squared. I'm going to do the same with our 1 minus x to the, whoops, to the minus a half. So in this case, our value of n, the power, is minus a half. So we get 1 plus n, and our x is minus x, plus n, n minus 1, all over 2, multiplied by x, which is minus x, all squared. So that becomes 1 plus a half x that we have here. Now this is going to be a positive, a negative, a positive, so it's going to be a positive. So I've got a half times 3 over 2 divided by 2 plus 3 over 8x squared. Now we're trying to show that it's equal to this thing, and it's these two things here multiplied together. So I'm going to take this bit that we have, and I'm going to take this bit that we have, and I'm going to think about how these things multiply out as our double brackets. And I'm only concerned about the terms that give me things to do with x squared. Anything bigger than x squared isn't going to be helpful to me. So I get 1 times this, this, and this. So I get 1 plus a half x plus 3 over 8x squared. And then I'm going to have these things multiplied by 2x as well. So I get that's 2x plus 2x times a half x is x squared. And then I'm going to have these things multiplied by the minus 2x squared. But this is really the only one that I'm going to need to pay attention to because everything else goes bigger than x squared. So I get a minus 2x squared that I have here. Just simplifying this that I've got, I have 1 from the constants. From the x squareds, I've got 2x plus a half, which is 5 over 2x. And then, sorry, from the x coefficients, that was not the x squareds. Then I've got 3 over 8x squared plus x squared minus 2. So 3 over 8 plus 1 minus 2 is minus 5 over 8x squared, as required in the question. And you'll notice whenever I expanded anything, I avoided anything that had a cubic with it, just because we didn't need to go quite as far as that one. That's quite a demanding question, I would say, for binomial expansion. Don't normally expect it quite like that. It then says a student substitutes x equals a half into both sides of the approximation shown in part a to find an attempt at, in an attempt to find an approximation to the square root of 6. Give a, right, a reason why the student should not use x equals a half. Well, you should know when we do these binomial expansions that this thing here is only valid if it's um, in between 1 and minus 1. So we're actually saying that 4x is only going to be valid, this expansion, if 4x is between 1 and minus 1, meaning it's only valid when you divide these by 4 if x is between a quarter and minus a quarter. So what we would need to say in part b of the question is this is not sensible the expansion is only valid for x being between a quarter and a quarter. 
so x equals a half is invalid and not, what did they say, not sensible or not appropriate and is, is not a good, and not, is not, is not, um, and is not suitable. They didn't say anything, so we're just going to say not suitable. Nearly there. Part C says substitute x equals 1 over 11 into this to attain a, an approximation to root 6. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So we better do some substitution all over the place here. Everywhere that it says x equal x, we're going to put it in as 1 over 11. So we've got, I'm going to run out of space on this board, part C. We've got the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x is equal to, and we said that that's 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared. And we're going to use the substitution that x is equal to 1 over 11. Hopefully that's going to show us something to do with 1 over 6. I'm just checking I've got that written down right. Okay, if I substitute 1 over 11 inside here, I would have 1 plus 4 elevenths divided by 10 elevenths. So I get the square root of 3 over 2. If I substitute 1 over 11 in here, let's just get that stored in my calculator. So that's 1 plus 5 over 2 of the answer minus 5 over 8 of the answer squared. And I get... 1183 over 968. Hmm, I don't even see where the root 6 is coming from. Why don't I do the square root of 3 over 2 and see what I get? Ah, great. This is the same as the square root of 6 over 2. So I get 1183 over 968. So if I want to get an approximation for the square root of 6, I'm going to multiply by 2. So that's 2 times 1183 over 968 and let's just double check that the question wanted it is a decimal give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form so we get 1183 over 484 just for interest's sake that is <coughs> 2.4442 and the square root of 6 is 2.4494. So it looks like we've got that one right because we can see how close we are to the correct answer there. So that's our final answer. That's a really hard binomial question, I think. Okay, question 12. This one is actually kind of year 12 content. The value, V pounds, of a vintage car T years after it was first valued on the 1st of January 2001 is modelled by this equation where A and P are constants. So when it was first valued at the beginning, this is the beginning of 2001, not the end of 2001, but the beginning. Basically, it's like the, the zero part, really, isn't it? Given that the value of the car was 32,000 on January the 1st, 2005, so that is when four years later, okay? So you have to think 2001 was at the beginning when T was zero. Then you've got 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005. So at this point, we know that t is equal to 4. And we've said that the value is 32,000. So we get the value is 32,000 after four years. And we get that the value is 50,000 after 11 years that we've got there. So we're going to try and find out the value of P and we're going to try and find out the value of A as well. So we've got V equals A, P, T. I'm going to use that first bit. So I've got 32,000 is equal to A, P to the power of 4. I've also got 50,000 equals A, P to the power of 11. Now if I take this equation here, number 1, and this equation here, number 2, if I do equation 1 divided by equation 2, on the left-hand side, I would have 50,000 divided by 32,000, which is 25 over 16. I would have AP to the power of 11 divided by AP to the power of 4. The A's would cancel, and P to the power of 11 divided by P to the power of 4 is P to the power of 7. So to work out what P is, I can do 25 over 16 I can take the 7 through the bit. I can do it to the power of 1 over 7. And we get that P is equal to 1.0658. 
and that's to the four decimal places that it wanted us to do. Now that I've worked that out, I can substitute it back into one of these equations. So I get 32,000 is equal to A times 1.0658 to the power of 4. So A is equal to 32,000 divided by that to the power of 4. And you get A is equal to 24,796 pounds and 08022, which is approximately equal to 24,800 pounds, because it says show that A is approximately 24,800. Then part B, it says with reference to the model, interpret, I always forget to do this, interpret the value of the constant A. So we've now got that V equals 24,800 times by 1.0658 to the power of t. Well, when t is equal to 0, this is just 24,800. So a is the value of the car on January the 1st, 2001. It's the value of the car at the beginning of the whole thing. Then we're going to be asked about what p is. Well, look, each year we're going to be multiplying by 1.0658. So we're saying P is the percentage, let's say P is the multiplier showing the yearly increase. You could say P represents. the yearly increase of 6.58% because every year it's being multiplied by 1.0658. Part C of the question says, find the year during which the value of the car first exceeds 100,000. So the value is 100,000, which means I'm going to make 100,000 equal to 24,800 times 1.0658 to the power of t and find out what t is. So I'm going to divide by 24,800. So that's 100,000 divided by 24,800. So I've got 125 over 31 equals 1.0658 to the power of t. Using log laws, we can take logs of both sides. So I've got the ln of 125 over 31 equals t ln 1.0658, because you can bring the t down there. So t is equal to the ln of 125 over 31 divided by the ln of 1.0658. So let's do the ln of that on my calculator divided by the ln of 1.0658. And we get that t is 21.88 years. Now, this is where people made some mistakes. This is saying at the end of the 21st year, it will exceed 100,000. So lots of people said the year will be 2022. They rounded this to 22. But because it's happening at the end of the 21st year, the year that it would actually happen in would probably be in one of those final months. It would probably be happening in, let's actually just think, let's take away 21 and times that by 12. It's going to be happening in the, at the end of the 10th month, at the end of October in 2021. So the year it happens in is 2021. Okay, I'm going to stop there and just do a different video.